Assalamu alaikum. Hello guys, how are you? I hope that you all are fine. Today in this tutorial, I am going to present to you uh, I am going to present to you the explanation about shale. Okay. And uh, why shale is used to model slab in ETAPS. And when to model the slab as shell thick or shell thin or membrane in ETAPS. Do you know the difference between shell thick, shell thin and membrane? If you don't know, please watch the video from the beginning to the end. Okay. This video is for those who are in the beginner in the beginner level in ETAPS. Okay. So to develop your knowledge base about modeling, you should know what is shell and what is shell thick, shell thin and membrane. <clears throat> what is shell? A shell is defined as a three or four joint or node area object used to model membrane and plate bending behavior. Shell objects are useful for modeling floor, wall, and bridge deck systems. 3D curved surfaces and components within structural members such as the wave and flanges of a double section. Okay, you see this, this is the area which have four nodes. So it's a shell and it has a thickness shell member may be assigned age constraints that means you can assign uh, support along the ages okay along the ages and may be loaded in any uh, in any direction along any side okay you can load the shell along xx uh, axis 1 or along axis 2 or along axis 3 or any angle uh, to the shell member okay now that we know what is shell now let us know what is shell thick actually shell thick is a structural component which resists bending movement and the horizontal shear caused by the bending movement it has in plane and out of plane bending stiffness hence it resists part of the bending moment caused by the out of plane applied loads now let us understand that you see the shell has three axes axis 1 axis 2 axis 3 okay when the when the shell is loaded along axis 1 or along axis 2 then the shell will bend in this direction okay in this direction and it will bend about the axis 3 about the axis 3 okay it is called in plane bending okay in plane bending and it if it can resist bending movement in plane bending movement then we call it that it has bending stiffness okay if the bending stiffness is zero in plane bending stiffness zero then it will not resist it will, will not be able to resist the in plane bending movement okay now let us understand what is out of plane bending if this shell or slab is loaded along the axis 3 okay then it will bend about the axis 2 and about the axis 1 okay it is called out of plane bending okay it is called out of plane bending and if it has out of plane bending stiffness then it will be able to resist the out of plane bending moment okay in shell thick member uh, when you will apply load along the axis 3 then definitely there is uh, there are going to be uh, developed bending moment about the axis 2 and about the axis 1 okay 
and due to this bend outer plane bending horizontal shear will also develop and shell thick member also account for the horizontal shear it also resists the particle shear as well as the horizontal shear okay when you will model shell thick you when the thickness of the slab is approximately greater than l by 5 or l by 10 then shell thick element should be assigned to the slab elements to account for the horizontal shear deformation for more accurate results okay so uh, if you summar if i summarize then we can say that the shell thick is such a uh, such a slab such a shell such a member or element structural element which have in plane and outer plane bending stiffness and horizontal shear or vertical shear is not neglected okay it can resist bending movement as well as shear force now let us know what is shell thin element in shell thin element it is nothing but it behaves like the uh, shell thick but one thing it cannot resist that is horizontal shear that mean we neglect the horizont uh, horizontal shear or vertical shear okay we consider that the shell thin element cannot resist the horizontal shear or vertical horizontal shear or vertical shear okay it follows Kirchhoff law theory. In Sheldon plate, horizontal shear and vertical shear is neglected. Now let us know what is membrane. Membrane elements don't have any bending stiffness. So it does not take any bending moment caused by the outer plane applied loads. It has only axial stiffness. It can only resist axial force. So, assign membrane to slab section when you don't want slabs to resist bending movement and shear force. Now, if we summarize, then we can say that membrane plate can only resist axial force. It doesn't have any uh, in-plane or outer plane bending stiffness. Okay. If we apply outer plane loads, it directly transfers the applied loads to the beam and column it doesn't uh, resist part of the bending movement developed due to due to the applied loads on it i hope that you have understood the concept about membrane shell thin and shell thick now let us apply this theory in e -taps. Let us check the difference. For your convenience, I have taken an example. I have already modeled a one story building. Okay. And I have defined section uh, three slab section that is membrane, shell thick, and shell thin. To define membrane, you have to um